Good day, brothers and sisters, and welcome once again to the CMI School of Christ. And we're going to go ahead and continue with our class, The Great Mercy of God. And just a quick announcement, I hope you all had a, a wonderful Christmas time. And uh, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, I was going to make an announcement about the new year, but it's not the new year yet. So uh, happy new year and happy safe new year in Christ. <clears throat> so I wanted to just continue uh, looking at where I was, where I, where I left off a couple classes ago, a while back, where it says, and God went up. And I was, I was actually planning on going into uh, Genesis chapter 18, and uh, I just, I just looked at some notes that I didn't cover uh, from the previous classes. And so uh, I decided that it's important enough, I guess, to, to, to just share this. So <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and do that. And so still looking at the phrase went up from Genesis chapter 17, verse 22, where it says, Then God finished talking with him, with Abraham, and God went up, there's our word, went up from Abraham, All right? And so <clears throat> we've been looking at, I did a, I did a lexeme search for that uh, Hebrew term, just translated went up. So we've been looking at different verses and passages where that occurs in the scriptures. And this next one, which we've actually covered, gosh, we've touched on this passage several times, and Yet, here's where that word, that lexeme, uh, the definition word, shows up again. <clears throat> so, this is Genesis chapter 32, verse 24 through 31. This is the breaking of the day, or the going up of the day. Then Jacob was left alone Mark this real quick. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. And it's basically until the going up of the day. And <clears throat> it's the same, uh, the same lexeme term as we find in Genesis chapter 17 verse 22 and it's of the day the day basically the day dawning Jacob was left alone and just one of the things that I want to mention right here and if I can spell this correctly is it says and Jacob was left alone and I know I've touched on this a, a few times but ultimately, the, the issue is with our soul and with God. It is with our heart and with God. Because the voice of man can speak to one who's not born again, and the soul will never respond. On the other hand, the voice of God, when God speaks to a soul that is not born again, built in with God himself speaking, built in, Jesus said, uh, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life, built in <clears throat> with the word of God, God himself speaking to the soul of man, with it is also the ability to be able to, to hear the voice and also the ability to be able to respond to the voice. We'll look at this in a second here. And that's, that's the issue because, you know, preachers, teachers will preach and teach. <clears throat> and really, if, if, it's not, if it's not God's voice himself declaring whatever he desires to declare, then there are no effectual results. 
there's a passage in the Old Testament that says, if, if the Lord doesn't uh, guard the city, the, the watchmen, they stay awake in vain. If the Lord doesn't build a house, the builders build in vain. And so <clears throat> ultimately, once again, with El Shaddai, it is up to God and God alone. And so right here, then Jacob, with verse 24, Jacob was left alone. No other person around except God. And so <clears throat> God, who is our true preacher, who is our true teacher, who is the true apostle, our true uh, shepherd of the sheep, our true high priest, Christ himself, the, uh, the what shall I say, uh, the culmination of all these uh, terms of people's places, things in the Old Testament, Christ himself, the embodiment, I can't say the embodiment, the very substance of that which these things testified of, <clears throat> you know? And so, when it comes down to it, we are with God and God alone, okay? Now, please do not misunderstand. I know that the Lord will use a preacher, the Lord will use a teacher, the Lord will use a pamphlet, a booklet, a tract, a gospel tract. God can use anything He desires. But when it comes down to it, <clears throat> to get the attention of our heart, God alone can do this. And He desires to do this. So very beautifully right here. And then Jacob was left alone. I love that. I love that. It's both a terrifying thing and an awesome thing to find ourselves with only God to deal with. And I know that that even saying that that way that's that 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 doesn't even come across with what's in my heart. But to find ourselves with almost like the children of Israel, it's, uh, I just thought of this, almost like the children of Israel when they had just left Egypt and then they came up to the Red Sea and they were basically in between what, 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 we, what we would say a rock and a hard place. They couldn't go anywhere. They were in a sense trapped. The only way out was God himself. It's, it's a terrifying yet awesome place to be in. <clears throat> and so, then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until, until the breaking of day, until the rising, until the, well, and I've got, I've got these, uh, I went ahead and copied some definitions for these words. 5927. The going up of, excuse me, the day. And this is the online Bible Hebrew lexicon. I think we've looked at these <clears throat> definitions when we first started looking at the term uh, where it said, or the phrase where it says, and God went up. But I'll just go ahead and read it again. If we've already read it, that's fine. Um, Here's the definition, to go up, ascend, to meet, I love that, to meet. And these are in the call, verb stem, Q-A-L, visit, follow, depart, withdraw, retreat, to go up, come up, this is of animals, to spring up, grow, shoot forth of vegetation, to go up, go up over, rise of natural phenomenon, and then I love this right here. This is definition 1A6. To come up before God. To go up, go up over, extend of a boundary, to excel, be superior to. <clears throat> and so right here, then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until the going up of the day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, 
he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And I like that right there, out of joint. And I've got, I've got a note here to look at that out of joint. Genesis 32, give me just a second, I'll pull it up real quick here. Genesis 32. <coughs> Whoops, wrong verse. We're looking at verse 25, and I looked at verse 1. Genesis 32, verse 25. All right. Wrestle the breaking of day. Solomon prevailed, touched the socket of his hip, out of joint. Yep. Is Strong's number... Hmm. Pulled up the wrong one. And I, let me move this over. So it's out. Let me look at it real quick. The strongest number 3363. <clears throat> and uh, let me read the definition here. A primitive root properly to sever oneself. That is, by implication, to be dislocated. Figuratively, to abandon. Causatively, to impale. And thus, allow to drop to pieces by rotting. And <clears throat> there's, I can't remember, uh, some author wrote a book titled uh, Born Crucified. I, I've never read it, but that's a true statement. Uh, because the life that we, are, that we are birthed of, we who are born again, is the resurrection himself. When we are born again, we are not, brothers and sisters, we are not pre-cross, having to then die, having to then be buried, till eventually we are risen with Christ. No, 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 no. Jesus, when he was sent of the Father, when he died, remember, all died in him. When he was buried, remember the testimony, when he was buried, all were buried in him. That's the Passover lamb in Egypt, the crossing of the Red Sea, Israel is my son, even my firstborn, the sun goes into the burial, the sun goes in, into the Red Sea, all Egypt <coughs> follows in there as well, except only Israel comes forth in testimony, in resurrection. When a soul is born again, we are among the dead, and remember, by the voice of the living God that contains within it the ability to hear the voice and the ability to respond to the voice, this is El Shaddai, our soul, by a miracle of God, is able to receive the living one. And immediately we receive eternal life, who is the resurrection, and therefore our soul is found in life, our soul is found in salvation, our soul is found in resurrection. So in a sense, we are born crucified. Okay, <clears throat> now for us who are born again, this is the truth, this is reality, this is not change. But what is our heart submitted unto? Is it submitted unto the knowledge of man below, or is it submitted unto the knowledge of God above? Remember, then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking, the going up of the day, the eternal day that is found above. We are, and I, I've stated this in a previous class, but it will be always one of two, my brothers and sisters. We are either looking into the face of the Adamic man, the natural man, who bears a false image, or we are looking into the face 
of the second man, the Lord from heaven, Jesus Christ himself, who is the true, the only true image of God. One or the other. One is darkness, looking into the face of Adam. The countenance of Adam is darkness versus looking into the face of Christ in whose countenance is the only light there is. And so we who are born again, the question remains, what is our heart then submitted unto? And see, Jacob was born in the land, we know this. At some juncture, he leaves the land for uh, Haran. And we know, I mean, he leaves purpose. We know that God says, because he, uh, Bethel, remember? The, he saw the ladder and the angels ascending and descending, and above it stood the Lord himself. And the Lord says, basically, wherever you go, I am with you. But he just doesn't leave him there. He says, and I will bring you back Again, and right here with verse 32, this is God bringing Jacob, I would say Jacob, his heart, back again. And so, what were we looking at? Yes, yes. If, and I'll just say this, if everything is quote-unquote finished, then what does God have to do? He doesn't really have to do anything. But even the Apostle Paul is communicating the mind and heart of God. He says, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. And that's it. God was the one. Remember, God said, you know, wherever you go, I am with you. And I will bring you back again. And this is essentially what God does. He is continually bringing, well, he brings the soul unto Christ at the moment of new birth. Then from that moment onward, he is continually bringing the heart in knowledge from gross ignorance and darkness unto the truth, who is Christ himself. And so right here, here's Jacob. It's nighttime because it says until the breaking of the day. That means that this whole whole scenario happened for Jacob during the night. Below. The word uh, out of joint, Strong's number 3363. Primitive root properly to... Sever oneself, that is, by implication, to be dislocated, figuratively to abandon, causatively to impale, and thus allow to drop to pieces by rotting. That's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty graphic. But listen, until this pennial, which is the face of God, until the Lord, <clears throat> until the Lord takes the initiative, does this work in our heart to prepare our heart for this right here? Us who are born again, where it is a one-on-one with the Lord, just as it was a one-on-one before we were born again. But now, it is a one-on-one with the Lord, not to be born again, again, no, 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 but for the knowledge of the new birth. To behold this great change that took place the moment we were born again. And see, until this day dawns, then we, my brothers and sisters, remember, I think it was one of our previous classes. Forgive me, I can't remember exactly which one. Before this day dawns, then we have in our minds a concept. Concept, it's, a, it's the dash square. It was, I think, our previous class and previous classes before that, our last class. But remember the dashed square? This is our concept, or concepts, plural, our idea or ideas, plural, of what we believe our life, here it is, the square, of what our life is, 
and of who God is. But it's a concept. And see, that's the thing. God the Father does not know a concept. God the Father knows the truth. The truth who is the Son. Jesus said it himself. No man knoweth the Son but the Father. That, this is God's eternal knowledge who is Christ. <clears throat> so our heart will either be submitted unto gross ignorance and darkness, which is man's knowledge, regardless of his IQ, or our heart will be submitted unto the knowledge of God above, one or the other, one or the other. And so as long as we continue, and this day has not dawned in our heart, as it did right here with Jacob, that we still continue with our concept and our idea. And so we pray to our God concerning our concept and our idea. And yet God knows the truth. And God is not phased by it. He is not disturbed by it. He knows that unless, listen, unless He continues to prepare the ground of our heart, to be able to receive his knowledge, then we will just continue ignorant. ignorant. <clears throat> and please listen, it is not a sin to be ignorant, but it's not good to continue ignorant. There's, there's not a hierarchy of any sort, my brothers and sisters. And that's why I call you all my brothers and sisters, we who are born again. We have one head who is the Lord Jesus Christ. There is one knowledge, the eternal knowledge of God, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. No man can boast in what is not his. It will always be God's knowledge. It will never be my knowledge. It will never be your knowledge. There's no room to boast whatsoever. There is only glory in our Lord for being so merciful to cause our hearts to be directed and turn unto His Son. And so the Lord in His tender mercy and ever abounding grace steps in into this night of Jacob. Not God's night, no, no. In Him there is no darkness, no. He steps in. <clears throat> and you'll, you'll find out, and we're going to, going to see that what happens is that in, in the presence, well, I can't say in the presence, because Jacob is in the presence, whether he ra realizes it or not, but in beholding the one in whose presence he is, his concept, his idea has just been crippled has just been impaled, has just been rendered inoperative, has just been brought to death. He touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, the angel said, let me go for the day breaks. The day goes up. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Verse 27, so he said to him, what is your name? We know this. And he said, uh, what is your name? He said, Jacob, it is I. Listen, the concept, the thought, which for him, it was heel grabber. Remember everything that Jacob implies, wrestling to get for myself. I mean, he was the son of his father, Isaac, and yet he connived to, be, to receive the blessing of his father. Completely ignorant that the blessing goes to not the first of the earth, earthy, but unto the second, of whom Jacob will become a type of, a testimony of. See, in our ignorance, trying to wrestle 
for something that is ours by birth. Wrestling with man, trying to get from man. And of course, right here, wrestling with God, trying to get from God. <clears throat> and he said, verse 28, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. I love that. Not Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, saying, I love this, Tell me your name, I pray. Remember, he just changed his name. Changed his identity. No longer Jacob. No longer your concept of what or of who you think your life is, but the true one who is your life, Israel. Remember, Jacob was born in the land. Uh, tell me, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. So he didn't tell him, he didn't reveal himself to Jacob in Genesis chapter 32. But see, let's, let's, let's just uh, go back a bit. Uh, the first name change, remember? Abraham. Abram to Abraham. And that whole passage in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, And the Lord appeared and declared, I am Almighty God. I am God Almighty. I am El Shaddai. The power, the ability. The Lord says, I am. And yet he doesn't reveal himself here yet to Jacob. And I thought about that, <clears throat> and I thought, well, the only thing I can think of, and, and this is my own comment, if the Lord changes it, that's great. Uh, in fact, I, I, I'd rather just, you know, go with what the Lord says and not my own thought. But I will just give my thought. Uh, <laughs> so don't run with my thought, brothers and sisters. Uh, maybe Jacob's heart wasn't prepared for God to make himself known in such a manner yet. I mean, Abram was, what, 99 years old when the Lord appeared to him as El Shaddai and revealed himself as El Shaddai? 99 years. I mean, I think, I think the story with Abram started when he was like 78, 70-something, 70 early 80s, somewhere around in there, 20-some-odd years before the Lord makes himself known as El Shaddai. The only powerful, the only able, the only capable one so that was just my thought. Uh, <clears throat> verse 30. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen, here we go, God face to face, and my life is preserved. My life is preserved. Not my concept, not my idea. No, that was impaled. That was brought to putrefaction before my eyes in the face of the true. Verse 31, Just as he crossed over Peniel, I love this, the sun rose on him, and he limped, and there we go, on his hip. Completely different walk altogether now. And now the sun rose versus being at nighttime, being in darkness. All right, let's see if I've got some more comments in here. No, nope, that's about it. Okay, and so uh, when it, after reading that passage, I started thinking about, because it is true, my brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful testimony of the one who is only light and the one who takes the initiative and does what no man can do, having prepared the ground of the heart to whatever degree that God may appear in such a manner. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16 through 19. This is the apostle Peter. 
For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you, listen to this, the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But this, he's going to put, we all want timelines. He's going to put this on a timeline for us. Listen, when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Verse 18, And we heard this voice which came from heaven. That's very significant. Not from man. No. From heaven itself. From above. From God. When, here is the placement, when we were with Him on the holy mountain, the Mount of Transfiguration, our Lord is not an event. Our Lord is not a time. Our Lord is a person. And God the Father reveals the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ that we might be eyewitnesses of His majesty when He has prepared the heart to the degree that is needed. <clears throat> when we were with him on the holy mount, verse 19, and we have the prophecies, the prophetic word confirmed. We have the prophetic word confirmed. Listen, which you do well to take heed as, I love this, a light that shines in a dark place. To me, he, we have the, the prophetic word. That's the testimony. That's the testimony, which is a, remember, a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, to guide, to bring unto the true light of the new creation of God, of the creation of God, who is Christ Jesus. Which you do well, well, let me read it again, verse 19. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed. Fulfilled, which you do well to take heed as a light that shines in a dark place. I would say that's our heart. Remember, our heart is either submitted unto darkness or our heart is either submitted unto light from the face of Jesus Christ. The, the light that shines, the light of his countenance. There we go which you do well to take heed as a light that shines in a dark place. And I love this. Look at this. Until. Oh, yeah. Until. Back to Genesis chapter 32. Then Jacob was left alone. Because remember, this is a thing between you and God, not you and man, not me and man. This is an issue. This is a thing between us, singular, and the Lord himself. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the going up, the breaking of the day. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to take heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns the breaking of the day, and the morning star rises in your hearts. You can just bracket, I believe, Genesis chapter 32, verse 24, 31, Peniel, the passage of Peniel, with 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 and 19. But listen, listen to what hope the apostle Peter gives us. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to take heed until that as a light that shines in a dark place, because the testimony is given of God 
to direct and bring unto the true light of the world, Christ himself, until the day dawn and the morning star rises in your hearts. What's he saying? Embrace the testimony and let the testimony have its perfect work in our hearts. And its perfect work is right here. The day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. He didn't say in your soul. No, no, no. In your hearts. What is our heart submitted unto? From the moment of new birth, the Holy Spirit is continually preparing the ground of the heart to direct and bring the heart unto the knowledge of God, Christ Himself. No longer the knowledge of man, no longer, listen, I, but Christ. <clears throat> All right, another passage. This is Genesis chapter 35. We're skipping a few. Uh, I don't know if it's years, definitely chapters. Three chapters later, uh, still with Jacob, verses 1 through 7. Then God said to Jacob, listen to this, oh my gosh. Arise. Now Jacob's already in the land at this point. See, he's already in the land. But he, God says to Jacob, arise, go up. And there's our word up, Strong's number uh, 5927. Go up to Bethel. And Bethel is the house of God. Remember, when that's, that's the whole uh, passage of Jacob's ladder, he called the name of the place Bethel, for he said, you know, God is in this place, and I, I knew it not. I didn't know this. But God is, not God was or God will be. No, God is in this place. Well, to him, if God is here, this is God's house. If I want to go find God, I need to go to God's house. I mean, if, if I want to go find a friend, I should go to their house. I mean, that's typically where, where they would be. And so, <clears throat> God says to him, to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, to the house of God, and listen, and dwell there. Don't you love that? Dwell. Remain Stay, continue there. Where? In the house of God. Why the house of God? This is where you find God. This is what I call the mystery of finding God, my brothers and sisters, for us who are born again. See, even for the one who's not born again, the, they're dead. They're, they've been buried. I mean, look at that. Look at that diagram. The burial is, is below. For the soul to find God, it must come above. But it cannot come above, for it has no power in and of itself. God, El Shaddai, has to step in. The only able, the only capable one, the only powerful one, the only one with any ability to do anything that the soul may find God come from the dead unto the land of the living where the living one is above. Remember, moment of new birth, we are birthed of the resurrection, the second man, the Lord from heaven. So now we who are born again, God says, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell, remain, stay. And that's the great mystery for the born-again believer of finding God. 
Even, remember, the, oh, beautiful, the testimony of the two witnesses. The women, I mean, the women go to the tomb looking for life, looking for the only life there is, Jesus himself. And the angels are there. They ask him, I know you seek Jesus. He's not here. He is risen. See, my brothers and sisters, it's the same with us. I mean, I think if it was previous classes that we looked at this, and, and even outside of classes, it's all over the scriptures. The, psal the Psalms of Ascent, up to Zion. Let us go up to the city of our God. The city in which our God dwells. Bethel, the house in which our God dwells. Up to Zion up. For us, the born-again believer, to find God who is present in our soul, but to find God, the Spirit of God must direct the heart and bring the heart, listen, above. It's always like that. Always. Jesus took Peter, James, John, Mount of Transfiguration, the Holy Mount that we just read about, took them above unto a high mountain, and he was transfigured before them. It's not only that, I have to say this, Moses and Elijah were there. The testimony of two witnesses, the law and the prophets, the perfect testimony of God declaring the one in the midst, and all eyes finally come upon him who is in the midst and him alone. The law and the prophets, the testimony, bless you, having served its purpose to behold the glorified Son. But was it below? No, it was above. God says this. To, then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, to the house of God, and dwell there, remain there. To go up, I love this. Uh, this is the online Bible Hebrew lexicon. It's in the call verb stem also. To meet, go up, ascend, uh, visit, follow, to go up, come up. Uh, look at this. Oh, wait, no, we read this. 5927. Yeah, yeah. To go up before God. That's go up. The word arise, listen, listen to these. Uh, the same, it's still the online Bible Hebrew lexicon for the word arise. To arise, uh, come on the scene, to stand, to maintain oneself, to be established, be confirmed. Okay, all right. Something of a foundation going on here. To stand, endure. Remember what he says? And dwell there, remain there. To be, listen to this, oh, beautiful. To be fixed. To be valid, to be proven, to be fulfilled, to persist, to be set, to be fixed. God fixing, listen, listen to what I say this. God fixing, setting the heart in knowledge where in he has already set and fixed the soul in reality the moment of new birth remember what jesus said john chapter 14 verse 20 in that day the day dawn the day star arise in your hearts in that day you will know i am in my father you are in me that's the order, and I am in you. I love that. The word to dwell, I'm still, all these uh, definitions are out of the online Bible Hebrew lexicon. The word to dwell, it's also in the call verb stem, is to sit, to sit down, to be set, to remain, to stay, to dwell, have one's abode. <clears throat> 
all these definitions implying being fixed. But at this juncture, my brothers and sisters, it is the heart being fixed because Jacob is in the land already. All right, goes on. And dwell there and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, and see, here's the deal. He heard the voice of God. And I, I, I stated this, built into the voice of God. Remember, even as Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and life. With the voice of God comes also the power, the ability to be able to hear the voice and be able to respond to the voice. Respond in obedience. To turn, listen, and see the voice. Come unto the voice. Whether that be from uh, not being born again to new birth or from being born again to the knowledge of the new birth. All right? Listen, I love this. I love the way it says it right here. And make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. Uh, the, specifically the way God says it, when you fled from the face of your brother. And that's, that's what it is. We, we cannot, listen, we, we cannot flee from our natural face. No, no. We, our, our natural concept, our natural idea, even us who are born again, my brothers and sisters, no, 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 that concept, that idea remains until penial. Yes. When you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. How about this? Your natural family line. Well, that was, that was my life growing up as a kid. No, my brothers and sisters, no. Well, first again, for, well, for, first, first foremost, not again, but first, first and foremost, uh, I have no clue at what age you were born again. I was born again at the age of 20. So for me, uh, everything, all the years before that, my brothers and sisters, that was not my life because that wasn't life. Why would I call death life? We do that in ignorance. Why then would we call ignorance knowledge, our concept, our idea versus the truth? And Jacob said to his household, I love this, his heart is submitted, his heart has, has heard, his heart has submitted, his heart is already obedient by the ability of El Shaddai. Let's keep on reading. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, everyone there, put away the foreign gods. I love that. The foreign gods, plural, that are among you. Now, I didn't check this out in the original, so if I'm assuming that it's plural. But, hey, it's our false images of who we think God is, of what we think God is like, right? That's all, that's all an idol is. Foreign gods that are among you, listen, purify yourselves, wash yourselves from that filth, goes on, and change your garments. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because this has already taken place in the heart of Jacob. I mean, think of, think of Lazarus. You know, here's Jesus. Lazarus, uh, his friend dies four days in, in four days in the grave. You know, Jesus shows up. Hey, he stinks. That's what they tell him. And here is Jesus. He prays to his Father, and everything that is done, everything that is not done, everything that is said, everything that is not said, is with purpose to prove that he is the Messiah that should come. And he prays to his Father. That very thing. I know you hear me. You always hear me. 
but for these who are present that they may believe. And then listen, how beautifully, how beautifully the voice of God, the voice of the living one, declares, Lazarus, come forth. And with that voice is also found the very own power of El Shaddai mixed in it. For the dead to be able to hear the voice of the living one and also respond to the voice. Lazarus came forth, my brothers and sisters. He came forth. But what does Jesus say? Because he comes forth all bound up with grave clothes, Jesus says, loose him and let him go. Jacob, put away the foreign gods that are among you. Purify yourselves and change your garments. No longer the garments of death, but the garments of life. Then, verse 3, let us arise and go up. I love that. To Bethel, the house of God. Let us. See, this, this was an issue not only of, yes, one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. Jacob was alone with God. God said to Jacob, but what governs, or excuse me, yes, what govern the house, governs the house of Jacob governs all who are in the house of Jacob. And praise God, Jacob's heart is submitted unto the knowledge of God. Praise God, the heart of Jacob is serving the purpose of the Lord in his generation. Therefore, his whole household is also serving the purpose of the Lord in their generation. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel. Let us arise and us go up to Bethel, the house of God. And I will make an altar there to God who answered me in the day of my distress. And I love this. And has been with me in the way which I have gone. What a testimony. God declared it. Jacob knew it and experienced it. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and the earrings which were in their ears. Look at, look at this. And Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree which was by Shechem. Why? So that they would no longer have this before their view, but that they would have him who is found in Bethel before their view. Not I, but Christ. Verse 5, And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. Verse 6, So Jacob came to Luz, which, Luz, which is Bethel, the house of God, which is in the land of Canaan. And he and all, I love that, and all the people who were with him, now, not only this, my brothers and sisters, but Jacob, not only being a patriarch, Jacob is also a testimony of Christ because the angel changed his name, not Jacob, but Israel. And this is what our true Jacob, our true Israel does. <laughs> he brings all unto the house of God to dwell, to remain, to be fixed, that we may no longer behold our concept, our idea, our false images, but that we may behold the true image of God, the truth, who is Christ himself. I love this. Verse 7, And he built an altar there and called the place El Bethel. Listen to this. The God of the house of God. 
Do you see that? A person, not, not, not a concept. No, no, no. No, not an empty house. No, the empty house is found below, my brothers and sisters. Remember, Jesus uh, came to Jerusalem, came to the temple, was speaking, you know. Now your house is desolate. No, no, no. No, in this house, the house of God, God is present. El Bethel, the God of the house of God. He's here. But we, like Jacob, in chapters before, just know not. But praise God, He does not leave us there. He desires not for, for us to continue there. But He continues faithfully by His Holy Spirit, preparing the ground of our heart that we may know that this day, that this, uh, the day dawn, the day start may arise in our hearts and our rejoicing be in Him and Him alone. <laughs> Verse 7, And He built an altar there and called the place El Bethel, the God of the house of God, because there God appeared to Him when He fled from the face of His brother. Because God appeared to him. I mean, to Jacob it wasn't, oh, this is a shrine. No, 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 no. Oh, or, oh, this is just, I just call this place the house of God. No, no, no. Why? Because the God of the house of God appeared. And behold, he is here, and before I knew it not until he appeared. It's beautiful. One last passage. And basically it's, it's just uh, continuing on with verse 30. I grouped, I grouped this Genesis chapter 35 verses 1 through 7. I grouped it as one uh, paragraph or one passage. And then verses 8 through 15 as a different one. Let's go ahead and just read that and we'll end here. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried below Bethel under the terebinth tree. <clears throat> so the name of it was called Alon Baku, ba Bakuth, or ba ba Baku, yeah, I think Bakuth. Then, verse 9, then God appeared to Jacob, listen to this, again, when he came from Paran Aram, and blessed him. Verse 10, look at that, and blessed him. Verse 10, come on, we're still in Genesis chapter 35. And God said to him, your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob any more, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. But remember, this is what the angel declared in chapter 32 when he wrestled Peniel when Jacob wrestled with the angel and he saw the angel face to face. But listen, it goes on. Look at this verse 11. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel. I am God Almighty. Now his heart is prepared. I am the ability for such knowledge of not Jacob, but Christ. I am the ability. I am the power. I am the capability, the capable one. Not Jacob's ability not Jacob's capability, but the almighty El Shaddai. God is the ability. I love this. And then of course, with him declaring himself as El Shaddai, he says, be fruitful and multiply. Not, listen, not an increase of flesh, no. 
No, not a multiplication of flesh. No, no, no. Not anything, listen, not anything of your ability. No, kind of like Abram with Ishmael and God has to bless Ishmael for Abram's sake. No, no, none of that. Be fruitful and multiply, he declares, to Israel, who is my son, even my firstborn. The increase, the glorification of the seed, the one true seed of God, Christ himself. It goes on, a nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you. Kings shall come from your body, not princes like Ishmael, princes, but kings, and ultimately, the summation of them is in the one true King of kings and Lord of lords, who is Christ Jesus himself. Kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave to Abraham and Isaac I give to you and to your seed. You can check it out. Masculine, singular, seed after you. I give this land. Then God, <laughs> here we go, God went up from him in the place where he talked with him, just kind of like with, with uh, Abraham. So, verse 14, So Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering on it, and he poured oil on it. The heart being obedient unto the heavenly vision, the heart being obedient unto the voice. Verse 15, And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him, Bethel, the house of God. Because herein he found God yet again. When God appeared again. See, God always has to take the initiative, my brothers and sisters. Man can do absolutely nothing. And if you find yourself in the scriptures, it is because God has taken the initiative. If you find yourself contemplating the things above, it is because God has taken the initiative and the Holy Spirit has prepared the ground of your heart to whatever degree, to such a degree that you are being directed above unto, listen, a person. I know we just celebrated Christmas and everything that we celebrate, my brothers and sisters, revolves around the one who was sent from God. And this one is a person. Not a concept, not an idea, but a person. So, the Lord bless you. Have a, have a prosperous new year in Christ. And Lord willing, we'll continue these uh, classes coming into next year. Amen? Amen. Lord bless. We'll see you next year, Lord willing. Amen.